Hey everyone, my name is Chris and welcome back to the Beamer Barn. In today's episode, I'm gonna be breaking down the secondary air pump systems on BMWs because we have to diagnose the problem on my E46 wagon. It has a code for a secondary air pump system, flow rate too low. And so I'm gonna be breaking down the basics of how it works on all BMWs. That way, if you have a code or a problem with yours, you can get it solved quickly and easily. So let's jump over to the table here and I'm gonna show you guys a hand-drawn diagram that really breaks down how the system works so you can easily diagnose when it's broken. So the secondary air pump system is a component of your engine that works to reduce the emissions basically and it only works during startup. So your engine has, you know, let's say it's a six cylinder BMW six cylinder. It has six exhaust ports. Well, inside the cylinder head of the motor, there's actually a channel that runs through it. And at the end of this channel comes out the secondary air pump valve. So the air valve looks like this and it would have a vacuum line that goes off of it to a solenoid. So the solenoid is what regulates the vacuum pressure that comes from the motor, so that comes back from the motor over here. And your valve is either opened or closed by this vacuum solenoid. Now, the channel here goes from the valve to a plastic hose, which goes to your pump. So the pump is actually taking air from the outside and forcing it into the valve when the valve is open and when both of those things happen the air is forced into the cylinder head of the motor and it mixes with the combustion gases as they come out so that it actually dilutes the exhaust gas since the catalytic converter cannot work properly until it's at temperature so that way when these diluted gases get to the cat and then they come out and they go to your O2 sensor. Your O2 sensor will read that it's not harmful gases, that it's diluted enough coming out of your tailpipe, that it's safe to breathe, and that it's going to pass, pass emissions, basically. So I'm not, I'm not sure if that, that's all true, if it's safe to breathe or anything like that. But basically, that's how the system works. And I hope it hasn't gotten too messy here. But basically, the system can fail for just a couple of simple reasons. There's either the pump, there's the valve, or there's the vacuum source. And basically, if any of these things fail, which they are electronic in most ways, or mechanical like the vacuum, if any of these things fail, then the exhaust gases will not be diluted, and then the O2 sensor will read that they are not diluted on startup, and then basically you get a check engine light. So I don't know what a check engine light looks like, but that is what is gonna cause your check engine light. So now the question is, why could this system fail? Well, a lot of people will tell you that the system could be failing because the uh, ports inside the motor, they're clogged up with carbon. So what happens is that when the car is running normally and it's not warming up, this valve is closed right here. So the exhaust gases actually can go backwards through the channels and then they'll get stopped right here where the valve is closed and then they'll start to block up the passages leading up to that and it's very possible that you could have insufficient flow through this tube. Now usually what would happen at that point is you know you might have some exhaust flow on one of the cylinders and you would get maybe one fault code that would say bank one and it would say secondary air pump too low. But on my car we have both bank one and bank two. So we know that there's no successful air being diluted in either bank one or bank two. So we have to assume that air is not getting in to the motor. And so we need to figure out, is it a bad valve? Is it a bad pump? Do we not have a vacuum source? Or if we check all of these things, we would know for sure that we have a blockage in the pump right here. So if there was a blockage, you could then remove the pump and check. Maybe it's just at the port or at the mouth here and you could break off that carbon. But if you take off this valve 
and there is no hole, there's just a flat surface, then you know for sure that there's carbon buildup. So now I hope that this diagram has helped you. Let's go ahead and look at the car and hopefully we can figure out what the problem is. So here is the engine of my 325XI and you'll see right here is the secondary air pump motor and here's the secondary air pump valve. So we're gonna take a closer look at these in a second, but depending on the year and model of your car, these might be tucked under the bumper out of view. You might not be able to get access to the valve without, you know, on a V8, they're usually at the front, so you might have to take off some covers and such, uh, but they all look really similar. They all use the, almost the same pump and literally the same valve right here. So what a lot of people do when these things get mixed up is you can tune them out and it just just removes the pump you leave it unplugged and you would put a block off plate where the valve is and then you'd be able to run without having the code but the problem is then you're not going to pass inspection emissions and you do have you know costs associated with tuning the car so we're going to figure out exactly what's wrong with my system here the first thing that we're going to do is trace the vacuum source which I guess is broken so this is the vacuum source for the valve that I was talking about and it's clearly just open to atmosphere. So we'll see on the side of this motor. I think it's, yeah, it's right here. There's the vacuum source that should be coming from a solenoid. So what we need to do is we need to uncover this right here, the covers, and check the routing of that vacuum line, make sure that the uh, rubber isn't broken anywhere else. And then we'll be able to confirm that it goes from the solenoid all the way to the valve and it has a good vacuum. So that's what we're gonna do now. Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, I actually broke this earlier right here when I was checking for a vacuum source before we started the video. And I was just gonna say that that was why I had the fault codes. But as I unclipped the vacuum line from the uh, brackets on the side of the motor here, it literally just came completely loose and out from the back of the motor. So you'll see, like I said, the vacuum line on both ends of it was dry enough to just start breaking apart naturally. So we're gonna have to find the rest of the vacuum source, which I believe goes to a uh, solenoid. And that's what controls the valve to be open or close, depending on if the car is doing its startup routine. So let me poke around a little bit more, see if I can find the rest of that vacuum line. So I had to put the car in the air to get a better look and I also removed this plastic shield that's right here so I could get a better look at what's going on back here because I have this extra vacuum line and originally I put like a piece of tape on it. I thought that this was the exhaust valve but when I go and feel, it actually lines up to a T and that T goes to the vacuum port on the motor and then to the uh, vacuum canister, which goes to the firewall, which goes to the exhaust valve. So I do want to block off the exhaust valve because it's non-functional in the rear. I don't feel like enabling it and I like how it sounds. Um, so we're going to probably tee off or cap that off completely. Like I said, this, I have no clue what it's for, but it's obviously extra and the previous owner probably tapped it in for something and then ended up not needing it. So he just plugged it off. And then we need to replace all the vacuum lines that go from the solenoid valve to the pump over here. So we're gonna do that now to make sure that the vacuum lines are good and then we'll move on to testing the motor.
So now we've got our vacuum line situation under control. I reused the hard line that goes around the motor here and I was able to add new vacuum line to go to the solenoid and from the solenoid to the check valve that you saw, that was that white and black little piece. And then the check valve goes to intake manifold. Then we had the T that came off from the exhaust vacuum and I went ahead and just capped that off. You saw with that little bit. Um, and now we're going to move on to testing the motor. So I'm pretty sure that my issue is resolved because we didn't have a vacuum source. That's probably why the valve wasn't opening and letting the secondary air pump work. But in case you've checked your vacuum lines and you've determined that they're fine, there's no leaks and it's got a good vacuum source from the motor, then there's two other things that fail super commonly. Number one, the motor, and number two is that solenoid back there. Now, we're gonna test them in the same way by applying power. When we apply power to the motor here, it should make noise and spin up. And when you apply power to the solenoid back there, it should click and that it means that it's opening or closing. You could also put your mouth up to it and blow through it while it clicks to make sure that it's not clogged or that it's actually closing and it's not broken, but that's pretty easy to test. And let me show you guys how to test the motor. So here we have my power probe, and as you see, I've removed the secondary air pump so we can get better access to the plug for it right here. And the plug designates that the left pin is brown for ground, so I've grounded it here. So now when we power it with the power probe, 12 volts to this thing should make it turn and spit some air out. So let's go ahead and try it out. So it looks like it works, it does spin up. Now we can go ahead and reinstall it and I'll show you guys one more way to test this thing, kind of the lazy way, but if we start up the car and the car is cold, it should power this thing on and do the whole routine with the secondary air pump that I described earlier. So let's put this back in and then see if it powers up. And you know what, while I've got the pump installed, I'm gonna test one more thing here, which you guys can also do to check if your system is working. I've got the vacuum unplugged that goes to the valve right here. So when we come over here, we should expect two things. Number one, this pump should be pumping air out of the nozzle right here. Number two is that this vacuum line for the valve should have vacuum on it. So you can go ahead and lick your thumb, put it near the hole, and you should be able to feel the wind being sucked into it. And that indicates that the valve is trying to be open so if you have both of those things and you still have a check engine light then you probably have a bad valve or you have the clogged up cylinder head and in that case the cylinder head has to be removed to be cleaned i believe so don't quote me on that i think there are some other solutions with some special tools but it's not an easy job to do so let's go ahead and test these two things right now by starting up the motor and yes i do have the air box back on with the mass airflow sensor all the vacuum lines connected over here so the engine's ready to go So unfortunately the motor is not cold yet, so it's not gonna do its cold start routine since I just pulled it in the garage just like an hour ago. But I think that you guys can get the deal. You should turn the motor on and immediately hear this thing roaring. It's really loud when it's being powered on. And then if you hear this thing making noise, check for vacuum going to the line that goes to your secondary air valve and make sure that you got a vacuum there because the solenoid should be open. And as long as both of those things work, you've probably fixed your system. In this case though, I'm not gonna be able to test the solenoid, but I do think that the vacuum line was our main issue. So I hope that fixes our issue and I hope that you guys learn something. So that's gonna conclude our video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and you learned something and hopefully you guys are able to now solve your secondary air pump system faults at home easily. If you have any questions about the system, feel free to drop them down below. I'll try to help you guys out. Or if you have some information about how you fix your own secondary air pump system in the past, feel free to leave it in a comment down below. That way we can all learn from each other's experiences. So go ahead and leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't yet. And as always, I hope everyone has an awesome day. We'll see you next time.